let me uh, change up a bit. This question is perhaps primarily for uh, Emmanuel, though I suppose any of us could uh, weigh in. Uh, what's a talented mathematician and how do you identify them? And this is a, a particularly interesting question as uh, let me say that uh, the IHES as we uh, noted has, has many, many fields medalists. And uh, of course there are many institutions that hire their professors after they won the Fields Medal, but the IHS has been very good at hiring people before they won the Fields Medal. So there is some special uh, excellence in that here. So Emmanuel, could you perhaps you know, weigh in or tell us something about how the IHS would identify its uh, candidates? Uh, okay, thanks for the question. So one, one fact I could tell before answering is that uh, the average age of uh, recruitment in mathematics at IHES for permanent professors is uh, 31. And uh, even Pierre Delin was hired at maybe 23 or something like this. So certainly IHES is um, uh, an institution who takes risk and uh, has a kind of track record, which is uh, significant. But so, it just means that um, we have to uh, be careful of, uh, of what is going on in all the world, to be in contact with the best mathematicians and to ask them at any time, uh, where should we look for a best mathematician for young talents? And so we're in the process of hiring someone uh, we just start by asking uh, a lot of colleagues uh, who, who I should follow, what, uh, uh, who would be the next rising star and things like this. And when we identify uh, some of them, we try to make a, a more serious study. Uh, we ask uh, several uh, uh, people in the world uh, to help us uh, figure out if it's the right person. And then we make our mind by ourselves somehow. And at the end, uh, we, we try to hire the, the people. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> this is part of uh, the job, which is quite interesting. And we have to prove that uh, these people will be able to do uh, uh, the best science here. He, he will have the best conditions. and. Uh, and we try to achieve this. Yes. Would you like to send us, say something more, Emmanuel, perhaps about uh, the, the, the visitors or the other parts of the program? Oh. Um, what can I add? I mean, <clears throat> so the way we are selecting um, visitors, so every year we have a, a two scientific uh, council meeting and um, uh, we have an open call uh, worldly with, uh, so people are applying from uh, all over the world. And uh, during the meeting, we select the visitors and uh, based principally on excellence. And, uh, uh, but also we are able to adapt ourselves for shorter visits if someone is willing to collaborate uh, with uh, a colleague and uh, this colleague is willing to come in two weeks, we are, uh, able to react uh, immediately and organize the visit uh, if we are, I mean, generally we have availability at Lormay, our residence, our housing complex, and uh, we can be very reactive. Uh, so we, we try to maintain a good balance between open calls in, for which the entire world can apply and uh, direct uh, application for collaborators and uh, for when we see someone who did a great uh, result, uh, we want to have him uh, lecture at the Institute. So we are very reactive to invite him in, in the following uh, weeks or months. And uh, we try to, to do to do like this. Yes. Okay, uh, thanks. Uh, I, I see uh, what maybe the uh, last question we'll take, which is uh, where many of us are uh, Americans, uh, certainly I'm American, uh, many you know, the, the Friends of IHS is an American organization, and why are we and why should you 
be uh, so interested in supporting a, a French institute? And of course, one answer has already been uh, given abundantly. This is you know, one of the very top institutes in the world. It's not an American or a French thing. It's a global thing. This is uh, you know, really part of you know, world science, world heritage. But uh, I'll add to that uh, the uh, argument that uh, there are different points of view around the world and different groups of people. And uh, hopefully it will stay that way. Hopefully we won't be all, although this is wonderful to have this uh, global event where we can all connect from around the world at the same time. Uh, nevertheless, we, we have our communities and our countries and our interests and our groups. And uh, the IGS is, is different, you know, it's, 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 it's in France and they have a somewhat different point of view. They are leaders in world mathematics. They are French, they are Russian, they draw on many nationalities. They are American, there are many American visitors, they have been American permanent professors, but it's different. And uh, so we are not just supporting science and math, we're supporting this diversity of the world of science and mathematics, which is really essential for its uh, future progress. And uh, so let me uh, encourage, uh, well, first of all, thank all of you for uh, your participation in, in, in the event. I think this has gone uh, very well. And uh, let me, uh, let me uh, ask the panelists uh, if, 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 if they'd like to add uh, more, uh, more comments before uh, we close off. Uh, Marilyn, did you? Sure. I actually do have a comment to make. Maybe it was um, an earlier question about COVID versus um, a long-term investment in basic science research. Probably a lot of people on the Zoom meeting um, there probably a lot of people are investors and everybody takes a diversified portfolio, I'm sure with their investments and having some, you know, you have your uh, traditional portfolio, but you would probably allocate some of your investments to high risk, high reward, game changing, possibilities. And I think that um, that's a really good reason to take some long-term investment, look upstream into the future, and think about perhaps making a very big impact. And by introducing some game-changing ideas and I think the Institute is a place where people are so creative and imaginative and have the freedom to follow their intellectual pursuits that you could do great things. So. Thanks, thanks, Marilyn. That, that's well said. Uh, another excellent uh, argument. So uh, I, again, I, I, I thank everyone for their uh, participation and uh, their support. And uh, I encourage you all to uh, look at our uh, website. The Friends website has been uh, posted in the chat, the IHES website to find out more. We have uh, newsletters. We will, all things you know, permitting, uh, hopefully have a, a, a gala next year where I hope to uh, see many of you in uh, person. Uh, thank you. Uh, Marilyn and Jim, uh, thanks Slava for that excellent talk. Uh, thanks Emmanuel for uh, the uh, you know, very uh, timely discussion of, of both the, the challenges and the opportunities of the IHS. I'd like to thank uh, Claire Lenz and the whole staff of uh, development and uh, otherwise at the IHS for the, you know, that, that, that very nice uh, film and for putting together a, a great event. Uh, I, uh, we can uh, salute them or clap. And uh, again, you know, thanks for uh, participating in uh, our, our first virtual event and uh, let's all keep in touch. Thank you. Thank you.